So let's go straight into it. Is there any scientific way to measure Nigeria's democratic progress? Uh, remembering, not just remembering, MK Abiola, uh, how can his dreams be fulfilled? Speaking about MK Abiola, I'll, I've been trying to find a way to summarize his manifesto. So I'd like us to start from there. Let's take a look at what MKO's campaign was built, built on. And if we take a look at that, yes, So for me, the summary of his manifesto is here. Mm. What do I mean? There are three things MQ really campaigned about, about his dream for a better Nigeria. And this is here. The roots is education. He really talked about improving the literacy of the Nigerian citizens, the masses, education. So education really was the root of Abiola's manifesto. The STEM was infrastructure. He believed that from education, we will be able to use that to promote and to improve on our infrastructural deficit. And he also, based on his campaign, we moved from education to infrastructure, was this, the leaves. Mm. And for him, the leaves meant jobs. And this really summarizes, if we look at it from a plant perspective, what MK Abiola really dreamt of for a better Nigeria. Education, infrastructure, and the blossoming of the leaves through true jobs. And for me, that's the, the deepest summary. Do you think that the president's speech on Friday reflected any of these things you said today and how, how Niger Nigeria's democracy will be defended? Similar way, Nigeria's democracy could be defended by improving education, infrastructure, and creating jobs. But I'd like us to look at it from a slightly different perspective, which is the style the president spoke and the content of the president's speech. And let's take a look at the style of the president first. And if we look at the president's speaking style, he has delivered five Democracy Day addresses. Looking at that, in 2017, it was the vice president that delivered the Democracy Day speech. Mm -hmm. And if we take a look at the five times the, the president spoke, here's what you would find. This year's speech was his longest. It was he clocked in at 38.7 minutes compared to his speech in 2015, which was only 19.6 minutes. So the summary is we've seen the president deliver his longest mm -hmm. Democracy Day speech. The second is we still see that the president, relative to the vice president's speech in 2017, the president prefers to read slowly. So in all of his five Democracy Day speeches, he's been reading at the rate of 96 words per minute. Compare that to what how the president, the vice president delivered his Democracy Day speech in 2017, the vice president was reading at 141 words per minute. So we see a speech that the president still prefers to speak slowly. But perhaps the most important way to look at his speech is to look at what came out from his mouth, the mm -hmm. content of his speech, especially regarding um, democracy and the coronavirus. Mm. And if we look at the content of the president's speech, especially if you look at all of his speeches since 2015, here's what you find. The president's favorite word is still security. In this speech, he used it 11 times. In all of his Democracy Day speeches, we see 43 mentions of security. The economy, in this speech, we see 10 mentions of economy. In all of his Democracy Day speeches, 33 mentions. Then we see corruption, corrupt. Um, 29 times he mentioned corrupt. Mm. Um, in all of his speeches, this time Only we see three, three, times. three times in this speech. Uh, let's take a look at oil, mm -hmm. which is also important to him. We see 28 mentions of oil. This time around in this speech, we've seen him use oil 10 times. Well, speaking of, of oil, sorry, we've seen him use, we use, saw him use eight, oil eight times in this speech. The good thing about it is the president also is expecting that oil will be used to improve some of the infrastructural plans that um, are being but, done. Yeah, but but today is, is well, it interesting? You see, look at um, uh, COVID nineteen. Okay. COVID nineteen gets more mentions than even security, economy, corruption, and oil in this. Speech. Because that's we've only seen that this year. But is it significant the words that the president uses? Is it significant he uses these words in his speeches? Yes, it is significant because out of the 
abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you see security, economic corruption, oil. Uh, by the way, we have some good news coming, coming on oil. The, recently, we've seen the GMD of the NNPC talk mm -hmm. about the NNPC trying to achieve $10 cost of production per oil, and that's the most ambitious plan um, from the corporation in its over four decades um, history. So we've seen what the president is thinking based on the words he's using. Mm -hmm. So we see that this year, even though in previous speeches he has talked about security, economy, corruption, and oil, we see that this year the focus is on the coronavirus, COVID-19, mm -hmm. and we see that from, from his mention. So that's a good, deep insight that perhaps this is what the president is thinking. So what we've all been waiting for, how do we rate democracy in Nigeria? I know that's perhaps where I really want to focus about, focus on, because recently an organization, perhaps one of the most credible in the world, called Dahlia Research, they're funded by the Ramsun, Ramosin Foundation. They did a survey, a representative survey of various countries asking citizens, how will you rate democracy in Nigeria? Mm. And when they got into Nigeria and they asked citizens, how will you rate democracy in Nigeria? Is Nigeria democratic? That is the question they asked. Only 35% of Nigerians say that Nigeria is democratic. In other words, listen carefully, only one in three Nigerians believe that even though we're in a democracy, we are not democratic. But here's why it is important. It shows that the trust deficit in Nigeria is greater than the infrastructure deficit. And whenever the trust deficit is greater than the infrastructure deficit, three things happen. The first is citizens do not like wouldn't pay their taxes. The second is voters wouldn't turn out in elections. Mm -hmm. And the third and perhaps the most important, if the trust deficit is greater than the infrastructure deficit, is that citizens would no, lo would no longer believe the government. And when citizens no longer believe the government, then the country becomes even more unstable un 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 sustain and becomes more fragile. And so, in summary tonight, the coronavirus reminds us, now we've seen over 15,000 cases, the coronavirus reminds us of the Nigerian nightmare. But the questions leaders need to answer tonight is, what does the Nigerian dream really look like? And that's, so that's probably what you will be discussing next, Babajide. No, in the final words, let's remember the words of um, Abraham Lincoln. He says that, I am not a slave, but I'm also not a master. And for me, that is democracy. You always have these wise words, speaking to wise people all the time. Thanks again for joining us on the News at 10. Babajide, it was so long.